Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn what is a subquery. So what is a subquery? Well, simply put, a subquery is a query within another query. So let's start with a simple example. We're going to start with a pretty simple query. Here, I have a query that where I am selecting job titles for employees their vacation hours from the VentureWorks Human Resources Employees Table. So I got a very simple query and here's the results. And then I have another query where I'm getting the average vacation hours for all the employees from Human Resources. So can we combine these two queries together? So I have the results from the first query and then the average vacation hours. Of course we can by using a subquery. So here you can see the select statement and in red here is the subquery. So if you recall in our original query we were selecting the job title, the vacation hours from human resources employee. And then in the second query we said we wanted to get the average vacation hours for all employees. Well here you can see that we have in parentheses that select statement. When a select statement is in parentheses, it's a subquery. So the trick here is, is that since our subquery is part of the select cost and needs to bring back a single value, such as an average, as this one does. And since it is doing so, we can add it as a column value to our query. So here's a really simple example of using a subquery in our select clause. The statement that is circled in red corresponds to the values that are brought back in red. So here's that same query again, but now we're looking at the queries as they are separately listed as text. So here was the original query for the job titles and vacation hours. Here was the average vacation hours query that we had. And again, here are the two queries put together into one with the subquery highlighted with uh, the red. So again, a subquery is simply a query within another query. In future lessons, we'll actually go and write these queries, but for now, my goal is just to show you what these queries look like and for you to recognize them and for you to also understand that they're not mysterious. So subqueries are very versatile. Subqueries can be used throughout your query in locations such as the select clause as we have just seen. They also can be used in the where clause, the from clause, and the having clause. So with all these locations that you can find subqueries, it can make them confusing because they're kind of elusive because when you look at a, a, a select statement and you, you find these subqueries, you're at, it can seem confusing because they have a lot of different uses and they affect the query results in different ways. And I think that's where the mystery of the subquery comes from. And we will certainly entangle that through this course. So I totally understand that that can make subqueries hard to understand because they just aren't in one place and they have so many uses. So I want to show you some of those areas just so you see where they are. And again, this isn't so that once you see it that you could go out and write the subqueries, but it's just so you can start recognizing those areas and get comfortable seeing the subquery so that later when we learn about the subquery, they won't look so scary. So here's a subquery and a select list. And we just did this earlier. So here we're selecting the age, the sex, and the average weight from an athlete, but also the maximum weight for all athletes. Here's that same subquery, but now in the where clause. So here's the where clause, and here's the subquery in red. And again, 
you can see where that subquery has now found itself in the having clause. So the same subquery can be used in different places. In this case, it may look scary, but what this really is doing is just pulling back a single value from athlete for the average weight and then using that to compare to the average weight found for a group of athletes by age and sex. So let's go back and kind of look at a subquery again and kind of walk through one before we wrap up. So here's another example from VentureWorks database where we're going to select the product ID, the name, and the list price for a um, product. And we're going to get all products who have a list price that's greater than the average list price of all products. All right, so if I wanted to do this query, I could go about it by first going out and running a query in query um, tool and get the value of the average products, which is 438.6662, and then use that number and plug it in to my select statement such as so it would be select product ID name list price from production product where list price is greater than 438.6662 I could have done that and then left it but the issue is is that if we ever add or remove products from our database this average price will change right so the beauty of the subquery is, is that it allows us to kind of adapt to the new average price for products. Makes our query more robust. It allows us to avoid having to hard code a average price into our query. So that's a big benefit to having a subquery. Hopefully, by seeing how we have these steps here, you can see that if you were to manually do the subquery, that you understand the steps that the computer uses to actually run the subquery. You know, it first would actually go out and run this query to get the average, get the 438.6662 value, take that value, and then substitute it in for everything in this red box and then basically run the query select product ID name list price from production dot product where list price is greater than 438.66662 a couple key points that I want you to keep in mind when we're talking about subqueries First is, a subquery is just a select statement inside of another. Subqueries are always enclosed in parentheses. A subquery that returns a single value can be used anywhere that you would use an expression. So what I mean by that is, is that a subquery that returns a number or a text value can be used anywhere where you would be using a mathematical equation or you would be expected to provide a input to a like a formula such as um, uppercase or even a column value so that's why our subquery that returned a single value of average could be used in the select statement because the select statement select clause um, is expecting an expression which is the column value a subquery that returns more than one value is typically used in a list of values such as those um, 
and an in operator and we'll talk about that later but I think right now it's important to understand that when we're running um, a subquery it can, some queries bring back one value and others can bring back more than one value and when you run queries that bring back one or more rows they can cause errors if they're used in the wrong place and again that is what can cause issues with understanding subqueries and we will go into detail about when and how those are used also keep in mind that those subqueries are very powerful and can be used to really solve difficult problems subqueries can also be somewhat inefficient so you always want to be careful when using them they're a tool to be used very carefully and when we get into some dangerous situations I will show you where those are and, and how to avoid um, overtaxing the computer when running subqueries and just in case you were curious if there are limits to how many subqueries you can have in your SQL um, at this point you can nest up to 32 levels of subqueries so in my mind that's quite a bit of subqueries so you could have an SQL statement that has an SQL statement that has an SQL statement on and on and on 30 times deep which I think is a pretty complicated SQL statement and I think that would be pretty hard to read so I can't imagine actually writing one that deep I've seen maybe three or four deep and that's been pretty confounding in my mind so I think we're covered with 32 so if you have any questions regarding this lecture please comment in the notes the lecture notes and I or someone else can get back to you and I'll see you in the next lesson